here we are with Scoot's first build of the year. We're going to start off with a classic hot rod looking truck. This is going to be a mixture of the custom Boosta Blasta and a Plague Burst Crawler. The Boosta Blasta parts you can see here, I'm going to build that whole half, but instead of the back half, it's going to be the front half of the truck. And then the bed of the truck is going to be these pieces from the Plague Burst Crawler. And the top of the cab is going to be this. Uh, the back portion, there's probably going to be some sort of separator between the cab and the bed. Maybe this, I'm not sure. And then I have a whole slew of different wheels, including some rubber wheels from a 135th scale truck. Uh, I'm not sure which I'll use. I might do a mixture of both. We'll see. Okay, here we are with just the pieces for the cab of the truck. Um, these pieces are from the Custom Boosta Blaster. I'm actually not sure if it's going to go this way or this way. We'll see. But I like these because it's like little smokestacks. So we're going to try to make use of that detail. And we'll probably add more. We're going to start off cutting this portion. do is take this and I'm going to mark the inside. I'm going to try to get a piece between those two. It's actually about the right width so I don't need to cut much off of it. I'm just going to make a little line and a little line here and then we're going to score that so that when we're cutting, we really just need to score. We don't need to cut all the way through it. So a light score line, and then we can bend it. And it'll snap right off. Okay, so now our glue can get underneath this on the sides of all of this and on top of those little bits which is going to be a nice strong connection in different points that's how it would fit normally my this part to be my windshield. So I'm going to cut these off and kind of rotate it 90. Actually, I'm not going to glue this in yet because I'm not sure how I'm going to do the inside. <clears throat> I'm not even sure if I'm going to want an inside or if I'm just going to put in windows, which a lot of orc vehicles don't have glass for windows. But I'm not going for your classic orc vehicle here. I'm going for a hot rod look, and I kind of want to do windows. So here's how our pieces fit together. You can kind of go like that, right? And I'm not super thrilled that this piece is wider than that piece. So what I'm going to do is connect 
that section with this section. I think above it like that. I'm going to make little divots for that where that pipe connects. So I can get that pretty flush. And I'm going to angle that. So it's reducing the front coverage there from this corner to here to about there. So we want to cut these. looking better it lines up pretty well right there it's at least the right width one of the most important things I do is move on to other parts while uh, one part is drying because you have a lot of dry time and if you wait for everything it's just going to take forever. Uh, luckily when you're doing builds like this uh, there's always something you can move on and do. I'm going to take the top of our cab which is facing this so this is the front this is the back. I'm going to attach this piece on here. I actually want it to be the same width from edge to edge. A sandwich there that is filled with plastic and glue.
not going to be huge because I don't want it to take up the entire hood. But we're going to cut this blower off and add it here and probably fill in around it. bed of our truck, which is going to slot in right here, I'm going to put it over these supports, and it kind of just hooks right in, there's like a door hinge here, and it hooks right into that. like a truck. sucks. So I ended up having to add a little brace piece in here, which just keeps it from twisting. For these, our tubes are going to go on the inside. That's going to be with plastic glue. Four wheels, ready to go. I'm gonna let that milliput dry, but they're basically gonna do this. Like that. And then we can adjust how far apart they are. Perfect. Let's measure that support bar. This is just some sprue. So it's gonna be just past that notch. I use that to be able to hold it in place. It actually might be handy, yeah, have that glue back there. So I get a couple points of glue and it can help hold the door in place. So we're gonna leave that bit. We'll make a similar one on the other side, which I think I even have the exact same piece over here. I 
if I want to figure out what all the pieces are going to be before I really start gluing stuff in here. But knowing that these fit almost perfectly is great. Trying to get my fingers pointing the right way. So while those are drying, I'm going to try to figure out the shape of a window because I want to get that window piece in before I glue that support. In. I want the window behind the support. This. this corner just to try to wedge in with that knot and not have to fight it but I'm just kind of rounding corners and softening edges so that it fits a little better yeah that's that's fiddly it'll work it'll definitely work but man that is fiddly we got that gluing and that gluing, which are pretty tricky to get in there. They don't look very good right now. They're going to need a fair amount of gap filling, but it'll do. That stuff needs a lot of time to dry because it was a ton of uh, plastic glue getting dropped on there. So while that dries, I'm going to work on the sides so that I just don't have to deal with this whole door area until it's totally dry. We're going to go over this. Once again, while that dries, we are going to make fenders with this poor armature armor case. I'm going to try to splice this thing right in half to use as left and right fenders.
Yeah. Oh yeah, it totally fits. That totally freaking fits. I might do it backwards or forwards, whatever. The other way. So with this piece, I'm actually I'm gonna cover some of that because it looks odd being only half of the detail. So I already did this one just to get a an idea of what it would look like. And I sanded it down. I'm going to take a thin piece of plastic and put it over the top of this to give it just another ridge line, basically. And I'll sand this one and do the same. basically going to slot in there and what I have to figure out once I make that space is how I'm going to fill in behind it which I think I should do before I glue the doors on otherwise it's going to be really hard to gap fill some of this stuff behind it because it's just an open void which can be very difficult to gap fill. So one side is going to be easy because I'm going to push it in and be able to hold it inwards from the back. The other side we're going to make a similar piece, get it inside, uh, and glue a little handle onto it so I can pull it backwards against the frame. With this I'm not trying to get it real flush and cover everything. What I really want is a back so that when I do green stuff gap fill there's something behind it holding holding the green stuff in rather than just a, a big empty void. But it is tricksy. strong it just has to be strong enough to hold the piece when I put it inside and pull it flush let get it glued and then let it rest before I pull the handle off and I'm not exactly sure where it's going to touch so I'm going to glue all of the edges. And that top part is going to be more visible based on where the door sits. So I'm going to lean it towards the top, I guess. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of milliput, or a lot of milliput rather. 
I'm going to use this to fill a bunch of that interior mainly because Milliput's cheaper than green stuff as far as the volume you, that you get. I prefer green stuff but this isn't for any detail, this is just for structure. Roll out a couple sausages and Start shoving them into those gaps. Same rules as green stuff, except it's less sticky. It's more putty, as in soft. side is still drying a bit. Before I add more of that, I'm going to make a couple drill holes. Anytime I do bullet holes or scratch marks, try not to make them too clean. It just doesn't look natural. So it'll be a relatively clean circle plus some distress around the edges of it. A lot of this could be painted on, but doing it this way I find helps me because I'll I'll ink it and those will fill in with the darker ink color rather than trying to paint a lot of scratches on. Some paint some scratches are paint deep and some scratches are metal deep. Driving hard. I have a lot of metal deep. And this supposedly could be a brand new car, but he's salvaging all these parts. And part of the aesthetic is the pool. Part of the aesthetic is look worn. But it's still an orc, right? Still gotta look orky, which is beat up and bad. I have these cool little bits, which are actually hubcaps from a truck kit like a 135th scale truck. I'm going to use them as headlights. We're going to put them right on the front here. They're real fiddly. So what I'm going to do is drill a hole right through the middle. And we're going to pin them. I'm sorry, you can't even see that, but I don't want to stab myself. So we're going to drill a hole right through the middle, put a fat pin right through it, and that pin will get covered with a little bit of green stuff. When in doubt, use the big boys. I 
I do want to go through it, but I don't want to go too far. Basically, I'm going to end up using this green stuff to flatten that out and make a little lens. This one is going to be our headlights. So those headlights are going to go right into that gap, which was meant for a fender on that kit. But I'm going to use it as the start of my uh, pinhole to go straight, which is helpful because I'm pinning onto a curved surface. Anytime I do this, I want to go in at a bit of an angle to start, and then I can switch my angle, mainly because anytime you're pinning on a curved surface, you run a much higher risk of slipping off. Wider. I wonder if I have a bigger drill. I do have a bigger drill. That's enormous. An enormous drill bit. Okay, let's see how that fits. Much better. Perfect. Yep. Honk honk. I'm a truck. I'm a truck. Oh yeah. That is super awesome. Sometimes I just use my finger. If you lick your finger or use a little bit of Vaseline on the tip of your finger, you can just get a little, get it pretty smooth. You don't want to press too hard because you'll get your fingerprints in there. You got a loose piece of plastic on the inside, which is annoying. That's going to rattle around forever. To the end of my days. Green stuff. Glue. Piece. I'm push that in. Smash all that green stuff into the glue. So the rattling finally bugged me enough that I cut two holes into the voids and shook out the piece that was in there. No more rattling. I have this extra tow cable. This is from I think an Imperial Guard tank. It's a really old bit that comes on basically every tank kit and rarely ever see used. I think it's a pretty cool piece. I already tried bending it to shape, so it should fit pretty well. Turn to the side here. So that's actually not fitting how I want it to. So I'm going to do a little bit of trimming here.
Okay, so we've done quite a bit of green stuffing in here. I've been filling in gaps. I've rounded off that edge to try and match the top. And we're just about done. A few things are drying, a few things are loose. We're going to finish up the last bit of gap filling. We're going to round off these corners just so they're not so harsh. And our face is looking pretty great. But we have this little gap up here, which I was going to put this little squig, my little winch squig. I was going to put him up front, but I like him back here. So instead, I'm going to put a little antenna which, in my head, that's how Scoot finds scrap and broken down vehicles and he goes through a battlefield and uses his antenna to find some good pieces. And just line the sides just a little bit. Fiddly pieces, fat fingers. Thanks for watching guys. I really enjoyed making this and there's many more vehicles that Scoot will be building throughout the year. So if you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe, share, all the regular stuff. Uh, you can find this and any other models I've made on Instagram. Uh, we'll see you soon with the next truck or the next vehicle, whatever it might be. I don't know. 